are you one of those learners who are struggling to apply to Walter Sassoon University? Well, you've come to the right place because I'm here to assist. I am Sim Gifty. Please make sure that you smash the subscribe button and then you like the video and share for others to also be able to apply at the Walter Sassoon University. Before proceeding with the application process, please make sure that you have a recent certified copies of the certain documents that are wanted. And these documents are your identification document, which is your ID, it should be certified and in PDF copy. Then your recent results or statement of results that should be certified. If you're an international student, we are going to need your passport. Please also make sure that your phone stays in this way. You know the rule if you're not new here. And without any further ado, let's just do what you're here to do. Subscribe. So you're going to go to your Chrome app and type WSU Online Application 2024. Then it's going to load. The first thing you're going to click is actually this hyperlink that says Walter Sisulu University. After clicking on this hyperlink, this is where it's going to take you. Then after that, you scroll down, you click on apply, this apply. After clicking here, it will take you to the application portal where you're going to see, am I a local student? If you're from South Africa, you're going to click yes. If you're an international student, you're going to say no. Then do you already have a student number? If you have applied before and they gave you a student number, you're going to say yes. But if you're a new applicant who's in metric, you're going to click no. If you are returning to complete an application, maybe you have tried applying and then you put in your details, but you did not complete your application, you're going to say yes. But if you are starting with the application completely, you're going to say no. Then after that, they're going to give you this form to actually fill in. You fill in your name, you fill in your same name, email, and your ID number. If you are an international student, they're going to give you an option to fill in your passport number. Then you create your own password and then you retype that password. Then you sign up. Then you tick on this box before signing up. If you type a password that does not match what is written in red, that means you need to retype your, your password. I'll show you an example of what your password should look like. So here they're telling you that your password must be at least 6 to 12 characters long containing a mix of numbers, letters, one special character and one uppercase letter. So let me show you how. Uh, 6 to 12 characters, 6 to 12 characters which is like words or whatever then mix numbers it it should have like a mix of numbers and letters and one special character and one uppercase letter which is like an alphabet after signing up if you successfully signed up they will show you congratulations your account has been registered successfully a verification email has been sent to your account please follow these steps to verify and activate your new account then you're going to click ok after you have verified your email you're going to log in to your application portal by your email and your id number and your password then when you log in they're going to give you a page where you can verify your email because your email has not been verified yet if you haven't verified this is the site that you're going to be led to after verifying your email you are going to see this you're going to click there because it had like prevented me from seeing the whole screen i had to click on that drop down this drop down this one you see once you click it's either it goes on to the and covers the entire screen or it doesn't. So they're going to ask you to upload a copy of your ID to validate the information that you have given them um, during the beginning of your application. Then you're going to also, they're going to automatically put in your identification number, which is your ID number. Then you put in your date of birth by clicking on that small calendar. Then you click on sex. Then they're going to give you this small drop down then you're going to click whether you're male female non-binary and so on if they do have the non-binary option then you click on title your title might be mr miss advocate and so on then you're going to click whether you're employed or not if you are not employed you're going to click no if you are you're going to click yes then you're going to proceed to the next step of the application on the second stage of your application, this is what you're going to see. Educational details. Which qualification type are you applying for? 
it's undergraduate if you are in grade 12. Undergrad, please do not make a mistake of applying for postgrad. If you're in grade 12, undergrad, or if you're upgrading undergrad, as long as you've never studied in an institution before and you don't want to further your degree, it's undergraduate. Then after that, your highest level of education, obviously, um, is your school leaving certificate South African or international? If you're from outside of South Africa, you click international. If you're South African, you can click South African. Then, if you um, have completed your, your metric in 2019, you're going to, to click 2019. But if you are currently in metric, you click on 2023. Then, are you upgrading? If you're upgrading, you can say yes. If you're in metric and you're not upgrading, you, you can say no. Please indicate your endorsement from your school living certificate. Now, you're going to click here. NSC grade 12 candidate, if you are a grade 12 candidate. Then, if you have already passed your metric, you can click NSC degree endorsement. If you passed with a bachelor, you can say NSC diploma endorsement. If you passed with a diploma, you can click NSC certificate endorsement. If you have passed with a higher certificate, then you can, if you're from like, a college you can click either national certificate vocational or your national certificate n4 to nc n6 then select your highest level of education obviously um if you're in university and you have completed a higher certificate you're going to click a higher certificate if you have got a diploma click diploma but if you have grade 9 ebet don't don't you're going to click there grade 12 obviously i'm clicking on grade on grade 11 if you only have grade 12 you click on grade 12 maybe you haven't went to a college or something you only have grade 12 but if you have grade 11 you're going to click on grade 11. please indicate the school you completed your education from this is where you will find your schools see this is where you're going to look for your school then after that you're going to continue after clicking or searching the name of your school and finding it, you're going to look at the upload the copy of your school living certificate. It be your grade 11, it be your grade 12, it be your NSC. That's that's your school living certificate. Then after that, you're going to click on subjects. Um, you're going to choose the subject that you did. Then after that, um, you're going to look at the grade type after clicking a subject. So after loading in your results, you're going to be in the educational details. If you have been in other institutions, tertiary institutions, you're going to state whether you would like to transfer the credits from for the subjects you have passed. Obviously, if you're in grade 12, it's no. Then you continue. When continuing, this is the third step, the extra third step, where you're going to choose your qualification, the qualification you want to study. Then. You're going to click 2024 obviously it's for next year then for which period are you applying if you're applying to be a first year you're going to click on first then campus faculty if um you want to study in one of these campuses maybe i'm going to say um mta nelson mandela drive full-time that ft stands for full-time that means you're going to be there then the part-time one is for those who are working and they just don't wish to be on campus after passing that step you're going to click on the qualification details then you're going to select as to which course you want to do in any of these three uh, faculties but it's going to show different faculties because we all want different courses but you should be able to identify which faculty you want to be in if you do not know what a faculty is please download the general university prospectus and then after that you will see your course and where it lies which faculty it lies on then after that you will be able to actually choose the course from the faculty accurately then let me just choose the course and let's go on to the next step after choosing your courses you're going to be redirected to application information this is where you're going to give us your address your home language your ethnic group your ethnic group if you are black you are going to choose black if you're colored and so on and so on your postal code province city town as long as your application has this red star 
it means it is compulsory for you to fill in that part. If it doesn't, then you don't have to. But if it does have a red star, please make sure that you fill in the information. It's compulsory or your application is not going to be able to go on. Then if you have a disability, you're going to say yes. If you do not, you're going to say no. Then if you want accommodation, you can click yes. Uh, if you don't, you can click no. Then here, this is where you're going to give us your cell phone number. You can see that cell phone is the only one that's compulsory. If you do not have a telephone or a work phone, you can just skip this part. After the previous step, you're going to fill in your next of kin details. The next of kin could be your mother or your father or just someone they can contact in case of an emergency, okay? Then you, their first name, their last name, their last name is their surname. Then their email address, cell phone number, um, how will the fees be paid if you're going to have NS fast, you can just say public bursary or you can say you can also click I require funding. Okay, then if you are responsible for the fees, you're going to say yes. If you are not responsible for paying the fees, you're going to say no. If you indicated that you're not going to be the one paying the fees, you're going to put on the person who's going to be paying your fees. It could be your mother, it could be your father. You can just put on their details here before you continue with the application. After you are done with your application, this is the page that you're going to have. And then if you have uploaded doc documents that you need, you're going, you, uh, you're going to see something different. Then you're going to scroll down, then you submit your application. Before the actual submission of your application, you're going to be on this page, the seventh page, the last page where they will just say there's no application fee required then after that you click on submit information then you are done with your application and then please don't forget to subscribe don't forget to like and share these videos to other people and watch the how to apply at the university of cape town the northwest and the uj please make sure that you watch those videos especially the uj and the uct ones because they are the ones who are still open and thank you so much for watching this video subscribe and share with other people share 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 like the video and goodbye see you next time